the book of Romans. Even when we think of the book of Revelation, the revelation that we should have received by now is that Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, was the one that healed and delivered us from the beginning, and he always restored us to a place where we should have been in the first place. When we recognize that God began to operate in your life, the reason why Yeshua came, the reason why Jesus came, the reason why the Passover is in effect, the reason why we have God in our lives was to put us in right standing with him, to put us back in our garden of ability, to have us walk with him. asking you personally, hide me behind your cross. Keep me low so that you may be lifted up. And I thank you, God. I bless you. Let this word sow seeds of victory in our lives. to the book of Leviticus, the book of Leviticus 23, we will, we will uh, journey in through the Old Testament to the New Testament and back. I want you to understand where the text comes from. I want you to understand where we're going. The reason why we are actually studying the Passover, because it is the blood. Look to your neighbor and say, it's the blood. And sometimes we have to recognize that what God has done in our life, we have to have the faith to believe that the blood ha has, has full power. The blood is victorious. The blood will wash you white as snow. The blood will do the work that no man can do. The blood has already done it. The blood is still doing it. And the blood is, is doing it right now on the doorpost of your hearts, the doorpost of your spirit, the doorpost of life. God is the blood. I thank you for the blood. I thank you for what you've done to us. I thank you for what you're doing for us. I thank you what you're doing through us, and God, I thank you for the blood. Look to your neighbor and say, it's the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood. Yes, it's the blood. You can, you, you can tell somebody, yes, I know it's weird that you would say it, but I have a blood covenant with God. Uh, 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 God, just, he ain't just my blood brother. He's my blood daddy. He washed me with his blood. He kept me with his blood. He healed me with his blood. He delivered me with his blood. I don't know about you, but I feel precious that I got a blood covenant with God. He, he might have got cut in his side. He might have got pinched in his head. He might have got stripes on his back, but he did it just so I could be healed. He did it so I could be delivered. He, he did it just so I can have the curse of sin and death pass over me. I I'm blood. I'm washed in the blood. I feel, sometimes I feel like swimming in it. Because I know it'll wash me white as snow. Songwriter said, 
Why did it snow? Look to your neighbor and say, why did it snow? Anything that that red can make you white as snow, I'm getting some, I'm getting some, I'm getting some. Thank God for the blood. Look to your neighbor and say, thank God for the blood. So Leviticus 23, we're going to start with uh, verse 4. And I just want to go uh, 4, 5, and 6. And uh, I'll take you down to 8 because this is just back prophets up. These are the feasts of the Lord, even the holy convocation, which you shall proclaim in their season. In the 14th day of the first month at the, at the evening, is the evening, I know it says the evening, but this is what it meant, is the Lord's Passover. Look to the name says it's the Passover. It, 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 it's the Passover. Sometimes we have to understand there's a breakthrough in the Passover. Sometimes we have to know that God does it in the Passover. Look to your neighbor and say, it's the Passover. The blood is in the Passover. The healing is in the Passover. The deliverance in the Passover. The breakthroughs in the Passover. The changes in the Passover. The restorations in the Passover. Healing is in the Passover. Deliverance is in the Passover. Whatever you want to know, it's already in there, baby. Your breakthrough is already there. You have to just understand it's the Passover. Today is not just any day. It's a Sunday, but it's also the Passover. And look what it says. It says it's the Lord's Passover. It's the Lord's Passover. It's not our Passover. It's the time that God appointed for your breakthrough. It's the appointed season. It's the Moedim. It's the time. It's in Jubilee. This is when you know that God's getting ready to pass some stuff that was going to hit you. It's getting ready to pass over you. God's getting ready to give you such a breakthrough in your life. There's a miracle about to happen in your life. You was getting ready to make a wrong decision. God said, no, I'm going to stop that. I'm going to give you the right decision because God's getting ready to make you a, a Passover breakthrough. Ooh, I feel like preaching. Can I just go and preach today? I, I, there's something that God's getting ready to do in your life. I, I want to I talk to those that have been here a while and, and those that are visiting today. Uh, if you're watching on the web, I want to talk to you too that there is something special about today's Passover. Look to me, look to me, look to me. I want you to hear this. This is the year not only of Jubilee. This is the year not only it just came off of a Shemta year. This is the year that God is doing something empirically different with this jubilee. This is a jubilee that happens to fall on a double Adar year. When they tell you that this is the year that was you might never come again, it's right because in 50 years or less than, double Adar may not happen. So you can't put them all together. It, it, what I'm saying to you, this is the year where we separate from uh, the religious days, Resurrection Day and all that. We separate from that and we, we give Passover is just due. It's special. It's just in, in an entwined with Resurrection Weekend. It, it, it's given its own special attention this year because it's a double Adar year. A double Adar year pushes Passover out later so that you can get a double anointing. You can get a double breakthrough. You can get a double healing. You can get a, a double deliverance. You can get a double a jubilee. You can get double, baby. This is the year of the double. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody want to double? Y'all just raise your hand. I'm not looking. I, if, that, if you want to double, just raise your hand. I, I can't see you, but if you want to double, just raise your hand. Matter of fact, why don't you tell somebody, I'm getting double, I'm getting double, I'm getting double. During this Passover year, during this season, I'm getting double. Y'all, 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 this, this is going to be a kinetic day. Can we just get moving? I, I don't want to sit still. I don't want it to be sit. I don't want to sit down on this word today. I want to get moving today. Why don't you stand your feet and just say, hallelujah, I'm getting double. Hallelujah, I'm getting double. This is my double moment. This is my double season. I, I, I'm getting deuces, baby. I'm getting peace. Yeah, I feel it. I feel it. Go, go, just go tell I'm getting deuces to you. And that, but that, that deuces is, that's the double. That's the two times breakthrough. That's the two times healing. That's the two times anointing. That's what, when I walk in the door, when they say it's, it's, it's going to cost you this, you get a two times anointing, it's going to cost you way less because it's a double breakthrough. This is a double. Say a double. Double. 
Double, I, I feel it, double. Y'all, if, if y'all sitting down on me, you're missing a breakthrough. <laughs> it's, the, it's the obedient act of sacrifice that gets you a breakthrough. Why don't you stand up and receive your breakthrough? Why don't you stand up and receive your healing? Why don't you stand up and receive your deliverance? Don't sit down on me because you'll miss out on your breakthrough. <laughs> I can promise you, you're not getting this everywhere because everywhere don't know about double a dog. Everywhere don't know about the double, the double breakthrough. Everybody don't know that in Isaiah 61, God promises you that you'll get double for your trouble. You'll get, you'll get double for your shame. God said, this is, the, this is that year that Isaiah was talking about. This is that season that your breakthrough is going to manifest. Don't sit down yet. I fully activate your double. Why don't you receive, be in a receptive, receptive mode to get your double? Why don't you get your breakthrough? Just say, you know what? I feel it coming. I feel it coming. It, it, that wind that I feel, that's not the wind of God, but that is an offering of the double. It, 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 it's coming. It's coming. You feel uh, the, the Shekinah glory of God. Yes, the, the, the glory, the presence of God. But he, with that presence come the weightiness of God. And that what comes with that is the double blessing. Ooh, if you got a double blessing just now, just shout hallelujah. I, I know I, I know I need some help today. I, I just hear I heard what God is saying and it just talk he's talking to me. He said in the 14th day of the first month that even is the Lord's Passover. And on the 15th day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread, and the first day you shall have an holy convocation. You shall do no several work, but you shall have an offering. Look to them said an offering. Sometimes we miss over that. We want to skip past that, but prophet is to handle that today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. What did I say? What Brother Dale say? Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. But you shall have an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. In the seventh day is a holy convocation. You shall do no several work therein. Passover is an eight-day celebration. Look to your neighbor and say eight days. It's a very important number to God. It's a very important number to God. Eight is a day. Uh, it's, a, it's a number of new beginnings. It's a number of transition and a number of change. The reason why God makes it an eight-day celebration, the Passover, a feast of unleavened bread, and the feast of first fruit, it's all together. There's an eight-day experience that God says your new beginning is about to happen. God says that things are about to turn over. That's why it goes from Sunday to Sunday. It, it, it's an eight-day, seven nights, eight-day celebration. That's why God said it. Uh, there is something that's getting ready to happen in your life, and God is talking to somebody needs to understand that that is going to happen. There's going to be a change, transitional moment in your life that is going to take place place in these next uh, seven nights, eight days. Somebody God is doing, somebody's doing something to God, right, for God. Somebody's getting ready to get promoted. Somebody's getting, re getting ready to get things that they've been asking God for in secret. I believe this is your Passover. Look to your name and say your Passover. Uh, the, uh, the demon of firing people was going to come, but not now. Because the curse of sin and death the curse of that demon is getting ready what? Pass over. Oh, Y'all hear me. Somebody's getting ready to get promoted. Look to your neighbor and get promoted. They cutting, they cutting the fat away so that you can get a breakthrough. Let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. Go with me to the book of Exodus chapter 12. And you got to say amen. My guys in the sound booth were prepared for this Bible hopping that we're doing today. And the Lord spake unto Moses, I'm a paraphrase, and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be a unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Uh, what he's saying is this month shall be the first. This is the beginning. Say the beginning. Sometimes we have to recognize that uh, January 1st is not the beginning, baby. <laughs> January 1st is just the, the, on the calendar might be a new year, <laughs> but it's not a new year to me or a new year to you. You have already been in it, but you get ready to get another one. In the, in the biblical calendar, there's two new years. This is such an awesome experience to God. God has the, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Rosh Hashanah 
in the middle of September or, or in October sometime, and that is uh, what we call the beginning of the year, uh, but in real reality, it's the beginning of the second half of your oh. breakthrough. Uh, that is the calendar, and then we have uh, this one, which starts with Passover, the month of where Passover starts, is the beginning of the year, always in the spring. Why? Because the spring is a new beginning, baby. The spring is when things start to pop up in your life. The spring is when things get your breakthrough. Why would you want to be uh, the new part of the year, be in the dry place in the desert, and especially in December and January, where nothing can not grow? What God is doing is says the beginning of your month, the beginning of the year, is when things need to grow in your life. <laughs> nothing don't grow in, de in January or December. Don't things grow in the spring. What I'm saying to you is God always wants things to spring up in your life because that's the beginning of the year. Things that we get ready, new relationships getting ready to start. New opportunities getting ready to start. Healings are starting to happen. Why? Because it is the new year getting ready to happen in your life. If you want a new, you've been fighting on the one and trying to figure out why nothing happened to you yet because the new year didn't hit you yet. Now you just got the new year, baby. Things are about to happen in your life. But preacher, what happened in January? January 1st, we had all these watch night servers of proclaiming a new year and new things. What God is saying, yes, you can proclaim and you can prophesy and do everything. It ain't happening until the spring. God just putting you in the right position, right place so that you can receive. Y'all may be seated because we're going to be here a minute. I got a lot to get out. Y'all asked for a Passover teaching. I don't. So say it's in the blood. This month shall be unto you the beginning of the month. It shall be the first month of the year. Speak ye unto the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month you shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a, ho a lamb for a house. What he's saying is you go get you a lamb ahead of time. Sometimes you need to understand that the reason why they went and got a lamb, you, so you, just, don't, you just don't get a lamb, you prepare a lamb. Y'all not hearing me. <laughs> he went into, when he came into Jerusalem, uh, uh, when he came in on a donkey, he, they didn't just go get a lamb, they prepared a lamb. Uh, Y'all hearing me? <laughs> they, 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 he came prepared knowing that he was going to be the sacrifice. You have to be understand that you, they had to go get a lamb and prepare that lamb for his natural duty. Uh, Jesus did the same thing. He said, I know I got to go to Jerusalem. The reason why I was going to Jerusalem is to prepare myself the lamb. <laughs> I, I didn't go to celebrate the, 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 the Passover. I am the Passover. So I had to go and get prepared to be the Passover. So they made, and they, matter of fact, they buttered me up. They fattened me up with, with the Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. But when I got there, I recognized that that was just a building me up for my task at hand. Y'all got me? Am I leading y'all somewhere? It said, in the, and if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto, unto his house take it according to the number of souls. Let me help y'all out. Your house is too little for the lamb. Tell your neighbor, my house too little for the lamb. My house too little for the lamb. Well, you got to share the Passover, baby. You got to share God. Jesus, Jesus is, too li is too big for your little house. I don't care how many square feet it is or how many children it is. Jesus is way too big for your little household. You need to go find you another house. Go find you some more houses. Go do what you need to do and find you a land uh, uh, and then share the land with everybody in your neighborhood. Go, whatever you need to do, this is a land that is meant to be shared. We try to keep Jesus all to ourselves. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I know. Let me help y'all out. Well, God, Jesus, you just told us, preacher, a couple weeks ago that it's a personal relationship. It is. But you want to share that relationship with others so they can have a personal relationship. I know what I preached. I was there. Maybe. But what I'm saying is Jesus is big enough. He's a big enough God to be shared with everybody. And I promise you, he won't take it personal that you've given him away. Look to me, I'm going to give him away. I'm going to share mine. I'm going to share mine. I'm going to share mine. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him in his neighbor next to your lamb shall be without blemish. Uh, a, a male of the first year, ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goat. And, and you shall keep it until the fourteenth day. Say the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. It's everybody. Say everybody. 
Sometimes you got to understand that everybody's got to partake in this. Everybody got to be a part of their own healing. Somebody, Everybody's got to be a part of their own deliverance. I, I can't help you get delivered. You got to do some things for yourself. Sometimes you get an understanding that we've been asked, we've been banking on grandma them prayers. We've been banking on great grandma them prayers. We've been banking on our daddy and our mama's prayers. You need to go ahead and be a partaker of your own prayers. You need to start praying for yourself. You need to ask God for your own healing. You need to ask God for your own deliverance. You need to say, God, take away that pride. You need to say, God, I need your miracle working power right now. I, I, I know my grandmama and my mama been praying for it, but I'm coming out and praying for myself. The Bible says that everybody got to take part in the killing. Not just me, not just you, everybody. Say everybody. You want your own miracle, you need to partake in it. We hold on to way too much stuff and, and depending on somebody else's prayer. And I appreciate that, that you know a prayer could get through. <laughs> but you surely can share in the work. And they shall take the blood. Say the blood. They shall take the blood. Look at that, the blood. Look at the blood. So say the blood. I, I want you to get this, brother. This, you my brother-in-law. I want you to get this. It, it's the blood that has, the blood still has miracle working power today. Uh, 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 Kurt Carr got a song on his old album said, the blood still uh, works mir miraculous powers today. I, I want y'all to get this. It, from this day, from this point on in the book of Exodus, they start talking about the blood. And then from that point on, the blood became an important part of the Yeshua worship experience. We have Lord's Supper every uh, first, first of the uh, month for, for uh, Glory Bible Fellowship, but other churches, they do it every Sunday. Some churches do it first and third, but uh, it, the blood had become part of a reasoning for God. Don't you know that this is the same blood they were celebrating on the Passover Seder? This is the same blood that they were celebrating way back in Exodus. The same blood still has redemptive power today. We, 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 I, I, I watched a TV one day and, uh, and it really stunned me that uh, a preacher got up and said, you know, there's no more power in the Lord's Supper. I said, so, and I'm saying in my mind, why would you say that? Or why would you keep doing it? His church was still doing it, but there was no power in it. I, I began to understand that he was misled by the religious experience of the Lord's Supper, not the mental and spiritual aspects of it. Sometimes we have to understand that what we do is out of obedience, but that obedience leads to victory. If you're obedient to what God told us to do, he said, for each time you do this, for every time you do this, I, I, when, when somebody tell me every time I do something, I'm going to try and do it every time. Because there's a miracle in the every time. I don't like to even miss communion. I go home and do communion if I, if I happen to be out of town or something. Why? Because communion is important. The blood still has miraculous power. Look at your neighbor and say, it's the blood. Get somebody say the blood. Say, it's the blood. I, I like that. There's the blood. It's the blood. You got to be playing, man. It's the blood. And they shall take the blood, strike it on the two sides of the post and the upper post of the house where they shall eat it. And they shall eat it at the flesh of the night, roast the fire, and leavened bread with bitter herbs, and they shall eat it. Eat it not of raw, nor sudden at, at all with water, but roast it with fire. That means we don't want no boiled lamb. Look to the next I don't want no boiled lamb. If you're cooking it in water, you're cooking it wrong. We don't want no boiled lamb. We want roasted lamb. Look to the next roasted lamb. My Jewish brothers and sisters don't even eat the, the don't even eat the lamb. They just use a big lamb shank bone. Now they just put it on the plate as a as a representation. I said, no, 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 no. I heard, I read the Bible, and the Bible says don't eat it raw, but he didn't say don't eat it. He said you got to eat that thing. So we had Passover Seder. We had some luscious, succulent lamb. Looked in there and said lamb. You got to eat it. Man, I was star studded that lamb now. Yep. It's I don't I I I really don't understand my Jewish brothers. Because in clearly through the Passover Seder and, and 
you had to be there to see it, and every, a lot of y'all were here, and I thank you for that. Uh, uh, but the, dur during the Passover Seder, the actual meal itself that served on uh, that, that night that we do it, it, it shows the symbolism, the afikomen, which is the, uh, the, 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 the middle matzah bread, the middle bread without leaven, mm -hmm. the middle bread that's without sin, that's broken. Mm -hmm. It won, the, the, it won the, the first bread, and it won the last bread. In the triune God, it's the Father, mm -hmm. Son, mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. The middle was broken. Right? The afikome. Then we get an understanding that even uh, in the blood, right, the, the blood uh, is on the doorpost, right? You go up on each side. And then you go across, if you, if you do it right, right? If, if you just womb, womb, just the, the action of it, make it across, right? And so you can have it on the doorpost of your heart, right? Uh, there's the blood of the lamb. We know the Passover lamb is Yeshua HaMashiach, the, the one that's able to heal you, the one that's able to deliver you. There's a situation that even my Jewish brothers didn't recognize. After the destruction of the temple, about A.D. 70, right, they stopped using live animals for sacrifice. So almost simultaneously with Yeshua coming on the scene and going on to heaven, he was the last real sacrificial lamb. They stopped uh, doing live animals almost, almost right after that. Why? Because Yeshua was the real sacrificial lamb. Look to them and say, I get it. It's in the blood. I, I want you to know that it is in the blood because your blood cries out from, uh, to God. Your blood cries out for God. When you, when you relate it to him, uh, he, knows your, he knows your name he, and it cries out. If, if the blood of Abel cried out to God, don't you know that those that are his own family for sure cried out to God? Look to him and say, I get it. It's the blood. He said, eat not a roar, not sodden at all water, but roasted with fire, his head with legs, and with the per pertinence thereof. That's all of it. Say all of it. Uh, sometimes I, I, I'm not there yet, but I'm going to get there. That's the guts and all. That's, that's everything. So I'm not there yet. But <laughs> Y'all know what I'm saying. That, I'm not there yet. I just can't, if I can't see it, if I if it looks funny, y'all know what I'm talking. Y'all, we gonna, we gonna talk faith now, right? There's a certain level of faith to eat something that looks like brains. <laughs> if y'all there, if you, if I'm gonna cook you a, 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 a sheep brain for you, a lamb brain. Y'all want that? Okay, I thought so. It says, eat. Go ahead, go to the next scripture, and then you shall. Let nothing of it remain until the morning. That which remaineth out of it until the morning shall be burnt with fire. He said, if you have anything left over, burn it. And thus shall you eat it with your loins girded, your shoes and your feet and your staff and your hand. And you shall eat it in haste uh, because it's the Lord's Passover. It's real important that you begin to understand that you be prepared to go. Oh, y'all going to talk to me. Gonna, well, you be prepared to go somewhere as soon as you finish that dinner. What God is saying, there's a, I'm getting ready to take you a place that you ain't been before as soon as this dinner is over. You have to understand that after this eight-day celebration, this new beginning is about to happen. I'm getting ready to take you somewhere. I'm getting ready to take you off to some place you've never been. Maybe in the spirit <coughs> or it could be in the natural. What God is getting ready to do is getting ready to take you a place. Sometimes you have to understand, you got to be prepared. You know, I, listen, if I heard that, I'd have my shoes signed, I'd have my suit, my, my, uh, my suitcase packed because God getting ready to take me somewhere. It may be in the natural, but I know that God's getting ready to take me somewhere in the spiritual. I'm going up. Say, I'm going up. I'm going up. I, you got to look to this. I'm going up. It's the blood that took me up. It's the blood that washed me, washed me up. The blood that gave me a breakthrough. The blood that raised me up. It's the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood. It's the Lord's Passover. The Lord commanded me to go higher and higher. The Lord commanded me to get a breakthrough. The Lord commanded me to do something I've never done before. The Lord commanded me to have a new beginning. The Lord is making me do it. Why? Because it's the Lord's Passover. I got the free will, but I free will he will go follow God. Come on, give God a hand, clap of praise. We're going to keep going. A little bit more. A little bit more. 
They shall eat the flesh and night, uh, eat not a roar, and you shall let nothing d- thus shall they eat it. You're going to learn it. For I will pass through the, look at this. I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborns in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Look to your neighbor and say, this is the day that he take care of all payback. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the day that you should be excited. I'm getting ready to enjoy this. I'm getting ready. I already know where the blood's on my house. I already know the blood's on my heart. I already know that the blood has got me covered. I already know that the blood is going to wash over. But them enemies, them people that have been abusing me, I hope they don't have the Passover like I got the Passover because God is getting ready to do something, handle the stuff that they've been bothering me with. You stop attacking me on the job. Why? Because the Lord uh, took care of it. You stop attacking me at home. Why? Because the Lord done took care of it. You done attack, stop attacking me in my finances. Why? The Lord done took care of it. You just start attacking me in my body. Why? Because the Lord done took care of it. Why? Because it's the Lord's Passover. You done took care of my children being saved. Why? Because the enemies got off of them because the Lord is the Lord's Passover. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm tired of my children acting fool. I'm tired of, t- uh, y'all know, if y'all understand what I understand, you'll be knowing what God is getting ready to do. I'm not talking about my children. I'm talking about the children. This generation is the first generation that I know less Christ than the, the generation before it. And we should be ashamed of ourselves. We got a world, 90% of the, the world outside of the United States is biblically illiterate. They have, the, but... 85% of the world is covered by a cell phone. Tell me why that is. They could translate every other document in the world right at the handheld of your, of your phone or an iPad. But they don't have enough translations of the Bible to get to every nation. We are living in a time where the Bible has gotten less important, unfortunately. But this is not this time. I believe that in this season, it's the Lord's Passover that's going to bring biblical literacy back to the body of Christ. People will actually be able to quote a scripture or two because they know it. You ask somebody right now to quote a scripture, other, and, there's, and I surely don't want to hear the Lord wept. You ask somebody to quote you more than uh, more than five scriptures, you get about ten people stand up. We are a nation that has been locked down, held, hold, handheld, attached to the technology so much that we stopped reading altogether. When we were growing up as little people, they had the little buses coming by. And and we didn't have no cell phones. We didn't even have no pages. We didn't have anything. All it was was a book and a little vehicle, the Riftmobile. Reading is fundamental. I don't know if it came in the Midwest, but it was all along the East Coast. And it was a little book. It was like a a little library where you get to go in the, you get to go inside the, the bus, and you get to pull whatever book you wanted free, as long as you committed to read it. You couldn't do that at a high school right now and see how many people going to go in that in the truck and get a book. That truck will stand there and maybe five people will take part all day. And that's a shame. They give the schools computers, right? And we think that's a great tool. But what that does is move less reading materials out of books and more onto computers. It's a shame. And we all voted for that stuff, thinking it was an a educational tool. Educators love it because they know how to teach, not y'all. But I've seen it. Walk through the high school sometimes, they're putting on a tape or a video. Math. 
how can you watch math? How can you do math, not on a blackboard, not hands-on, but continue to watch a video over and over again? Math. Science, basic classes. Say it's the Lord's Passover. That curse of biblical literacy and educational literacy is going to pass over our children and grandchildren. Yeah, I would expect that next generation is even worse. Keep reading, let's keep reading, let's keep reading. And the blood, look at this, say it's the blood. And the blood shall be a token for you upon the houses you are. When I see the blood, that's what the Lord said, when I see the blood. Look at this, when I see the blood. Woo, this is, uh, God says, when I see the blood, uh, that telling me that you love me a much that you'd be marked by God. When I see the blood, that's telling me that you don't, you don't, you don't mind getting dirty so you could be clean. When I see the blood, you, you don't mind telling everybody in your neighborhood that you are a man or woman of God. When I see the blood, you don't, you, you don't mind telling everybody that because of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, he was died on the cross, that I'm going to be saved. When I see the blood, you, you don't mind telling everybody that my house is covered by God. When you, I see the blood, uh, you don't mind telling somebody that you're about to get healed and delivered. You, when I see the blood, you don't mind telling somebody that you're going to live that free. Uh, hey, when I see the blood, you're not going to mind telling your neighbors that all about what God is getting ready to do. When I see the blood, it's the blood, it's the blood. Uh, what you got to understand is all God wants to see you is willing to wipe your face with a little bit of blood. Uh, to have a little scars on your body. Uh, why? Because what you went through was nothing compared to what he went through, but he wants you to know that you can feel the pain. I can feel the pain and we're gonna be in pain together but we're gonna be healed together look at that when i see the blood this is what the lord says. i love it when the lord says oh, when i see the blood Whew. that's telling me a sign sometimes you need to show god some signs that you trust him Sometimes you need to tell God that I love you. I'm loving you so much that I'm willing to sacrifice a couple of things. Sometimes you need to put away what you want and just do what God has you to do, and then he'll give you all that you need. The Bible tells me, seek ye first the kingdom, and all these things shall be added unto me. But first, you got to seek the kingdom first. We want the all without seeking. We want the all without doing anything. We want the all without, uh, without doing the work. We want the all just because we, we in the house. No, it gotta, first, you got to seek ye first the kingdom. You got to search diligently. You got to look for God. You got to ask for God. You got to do the things of God if you want the breakthrough that God did. Don't you think God was the richest man in the world? He had Solomon. He had all his riches. He has a store for you. But if you don't do any of the work, you'll get nothing. You want your healing, you want your deliverance, but you won't seek God for it. We'll seek everything but God. Look at your neighbor said, there's the blood. That's my sign. That's what the Lord's saying. If I could just see you uh, with a little bit of blood. I heard in the spirit said, uh, if y'all faint at the blood, Y'all know those, you know, you see them people that faint when they, at the sight of blood? You'll never get the experience with me. Because it takes a little blood. <laughs> it takes a little bloodshed. <laughs> it, it takes a little pain. <laughs> it, it takes a little hurt. <laughs> it, it takes, if you, if you, uh, if you fade at the sight of blood, <laughs> you're going to miss the breakthrough because it takes you going through some things. Sometimes you got to get a little lower than you thought you had to get uh, in order to get the breakthrough that you get ready to get. <laughs> now, sometimes you got to understand that humility, <laughs> a little pain, a little struggle, is that'll bring you to a place where you can't do nothing but mark yourself with blood. <laughs> you done been through some things with blood. You've been healed and delivered because of the blood, but yet you want to hold out against the blood? No, God said, just go, go, show me your stripes. Show me your marks, and I'll show you mine, baby. If you look at the 39 I got on my back, I, pray, I mentioned they paid a larger price than whatever you went through. Romans chapter 5, we're getting there. We're going we to finish. It's in the blood. It's in the blood. I, I got about five more minutes. Y'all with me? Uh, Every time I hear that, I, watch, I look at I got Kermit the Frog in my head. Y'all know that, right? <laughs> 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 Romans chapter 5, verse 1. 
Therefore, being justified by faith, this is Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace through God our Lord Jesus Christ. Don't you know he, by faith we've been justified? Look at him and say, we've been made right by faith. Sometimes we have to understand that we've been made righteous by faith. <laughs> uh, uh, God, uh, God took care of Abraham. Abraham wasn't even a, a, a people of Israel. He said, take you to a place and I'll make you right. <laughs> you know, sometimes you got to just follow God and be made right. <laughs> he, by faith, you just got to know that you've been made right. Sometimes we have to understand that what you did in the past don't count against you. What, you, what, you, what people did against you don't count against you. What you have to understand is I've been made right. God, uh, I'm, let, me, let, me, let me shout to my women. God can sew it up real quick. Talk to y'all men. God can make you like your first time. If you ain't married, he make you right. God could, God, could, God could take them 35 pounds off you. He'll make you right. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I could have I could have went there, but I'm going to let you alone today. My brother, <laughs> my brother-in-law, I love him, but he leave the door open too much, and I be wanting to step on in. He working a full gospel, archbishop, all that. I just mess with you. I just mess with you. By whom also we have access by faith into the grace where we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that trip. Look at this. Remember I said this? Knowing tribulation worketh patience. Don't you know what you're going through is going to build your patience? Sometimes you, sometimes what you're dealing with is not is, is not for the moment. <laughs> sometimes when your children tell you something that you don't want to hear, that's not for this moment. <laughs> sometimes when you're going through on the workplace, that, that that's not for this moment. Y'all 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 go see this. This is for the time and the season to see what your patience is made of. Sometimes you need to understand that 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 man or uh, that woman that's always a thorn in your side is a thorn on your side to work some patience into you. Uh, that 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 one is been, been, uh, that fight you've been fighting over time is not so that you'll give up, but it's so that you'll work some patience in you. Uh, the reason why the blood makes such much power is to work that patience in you. The reason why he got on the cross, he didn't do it. He didn't die instantly. He he built up some patience so some more people could come to the kingdom. Why? Because that's for you. said and patience it's an experience so patience work an experience after you know what when you've been going through something and you've been able to build up a tolerance to it, it there's an experience in that a, 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 a man uh, with a, a well argument will always lose to a man with an experience <laughs> if you tell me that you I, I, I done seen some people that might have the degrees but I might trust somebody that got some experience uh, y'all hearing me <laughs> if somebody can really operate on me or my child I, I like to see the doctors on the thing but I wanted the next question I'm gonna ask you is how many times have you done this procedure <laughs> if this is your first time I'm a pa I don't care how many doctors you got I'm gonna go find somebody with some experience it don't have to be no experience it just needs some experience I need some experience You know, we got all, I got all the, I got these doctors and they got all these degrees and they done specializations and all that, but how many actual surgeries have you performed? What, and then the next question is, what's your success rate? Well, I performed five for the surgeries. How many people lived? Well, I'm going to go find me another doctor. <laughs> and experience buildeth hope. Sometimes you have to understand that build, uh, when you get the experience that you know, that you know, that you know, that the, the result always going to end up in victory. Why? Because you've had that experience before. Sometimes you get an understanding that the reason why you go through what you go through is to build the patience that you'll be able to handle the experience so that you can always reach to hope. 
we, we sit there and we understand that hope brings us about a newness that God does. Keep reading. And hope, see, I lost my technology, being they in the spirit. <laughs> and hope's making you not ashamed. Why? Because if I could, this, this, is what, this is what God showed this to me in this revelation. The book of uh, Joel, the book of uh, Haggai, these prophetic books always deal with, at the end, Book of Joel talks about three times, talk about you will not be ashamed. You will not be ashamed. You'll be not. Book of Haggai tells the same thing, you'll be not be ashamed. Uh, the reason why they did it, because they had some experience. The reason why they did that is because they had some patience. He said, wait on the Lord. <laughs> uh, they, uh, wait a little while. And the Habakkuk said, wait on a little while, and it will not tarry. It will show up. And you shall be just, shall live by faith. What it goes, and you will not be ashamed because the love of God is, is, is shed abroad, and he is in our hearts, the Holy Ghost, which give us unto us. What he's saying is, I promise you, I'm going to show up in your situation if you wait a little while. I know, I know it's hard while you're going through, but I'm working some things out in you. I needed to deal with you. I said some things that you've been dealing with that you've been holding on too long, and if I, if I, if I show up now, I promise you, you still, it's still going to be on you. But I'm trying to get it out of you, so I need you to build up some patience and some tolerance to this so that then I can give you some experience on how to defeat this devil so when this devil come on you again, you already know how to get it, and you'll never be ashamed of it because I've already given you hope to know that you've already gotten out of one. You can get it out again you can get it out of it again and again and again because you got some experience in dealing with it and the, guess what i promise you the tribulation won't be as hard the, the next time yeah i done been there already i know what this feels like this is lightweight <sighs> now let's go to the real stuff i wanted to give you for when we were yet without strength in due time christ died for the un look at this he died for the ungodly look at it not just the godly, the ungodly. Say the ungodly. So that's some pe them future saints that you've been prophesying to. That's some, some sons and some daughters that you've been talking to at night. Uh, that's the ones that you pass through in the middle of the night and you pray over their rooms. Uh, that's the ones that you've been asking for to come on back home to glory. You've been asking them to come on to church with you. That God said, that's who I'm doing this for. I died on the cross not just for you that already love me. I'm doing it for those that don't even know me yet. I'm getting ready to bless. Uh, what God, sometimes you have to understand, the blood is not just for you. The blood is so God can see you and use you as a victory uh, to get other people in the kingdom. It's not about you. It's about the kingdom them, baby, bringing people to God, and so they can see your blood on you is the blood on them, and they can say, hey, we, yeah, if he came out of drugs, I could come out of drugs. If he came out of sexual addiction, I could come out of sexual addiction. If he came out of poverty, I could come out of poverty. If he if he, if he he came out of a wheelchair, I could come out of a wheelchair. If he came out of blindness, I could come out of blindness. If he could come out of sickness and disease, I could come out of sickness and disease. He can use you. Why? Because the blood that's on you is the same blood that's on somebody else. We got to understand that God uses the blood to mark you so somebody else can see God. It's the blood. Look to them and say, it's the blood. Uh, I feel... I feel a preach coming on. Can I just preach just for a few more minutes? There's something supernatural with the blood. Anything that's that thick, it, it has to be lathered on. And when it's lathered on, it comes off white as snow. I don't understand how that happens. But it's the blood that does that to you. The blood that will give you your breakthrough. The blood that makes a miracle happen. The blood that is, when it's washed on correctly, will last forever, baby. It, it's not just paint. It, it, it's not that, that peels every now and then. It's the blood that stays on and it marks you for life. I'd rather have a, the, the mark of blood uh, than be uh, perfect and not miss anything. Why? Because blood keeps me going. Blood pumps through me, but also marks me with God. I want that blood that covers me. I want that blood that will not leave me. I want that blood that died on the cross blood, that comes back three days blood. I want that blood that never goes away blood. I want that blood that heals and delivers blood. I want that blood that gives me a breakthrough of blood. I want blood, blood, blood. I, I'm not telling somebody to go get blood like this. I'm not telling you go to the blood bank because you already went to the blood bank, baby. Why? Because the blood redeemed you. The blood was the blood bank. It paid the price. You already took your withdrawal from the blood bank. It came from Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, the Holy One of Israel. Say it's the blood. 
It's the blood. Look to your neighbor and say, it's the blood. It's the blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, say, hallelujah, it's the blood. Hallelujah. Come on, stand to your feet. It's the blood of Jesus. 